Hey, what's up, you beautiful people? Dorn Aldana coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Today, we got something very special for you. We got a live interview with the one and only Austin Klein. He is a newbie loan officer who is prospering in so-called unprosperous times right now in a so-called unprosperous market. And so much so that I thought it'd be really powerful, inspirational for many of you, especially you newbies in the house, but even you veterans who've been having a massive financial haircut as of late as to how you can start to win in any market, not just a fair weather market, to build your house on a rock solid foundation so that when the storms hit and you know if you've been in the business for any period of time you know it's just a matter of time until the storms hit you guys are intimately acquainted with that as of late we want to make sure you're building your house on a rock solid foundation not on the quicksand so that you can weather any storm and today we're going to give you a real life testimony a real life tale of transformation That is a perfect case in point for exactly that with the one and only Austin Klein. Brother, so stoked, delighted, and excited to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm I'm actually very excited. This is uh, excited to share the journey. Um, I'm sure a lot of a lot of people out there have just experienced how crazy this market is as far as just how slow it's been and uh, just kind of extending the doom and gloom that everybody talks about from last year. We've seen a lot of banks kind of go out, exit the mortgage market. And we've seen a lot of banks just drop their pants with rates right now. And it seems they're doing, they're busy just because, oh, we got low rates. But somehow, you know, after, uh, you know, focusing and and focusing my efforts and and, uh, going through the coaching program, like, I'm still prospering, you know, uh, I'm busy as can, as can be as if it was 2020 all over again. Well, more like 2019, there's only so many homes for sale. So, <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's been, it's been a busy year. I've already surpassed, uh, it's not even April, you know, middle of April yet. And I've already surpassed the business this year that I did last year. So That's it's so awesome. It's right. Yeah. It's, Is everyone tuning in and listening to that for a moment in the face of this market shift with hyper competition, margin compression, rising rates, rising inflation, you know, obviously refi is drying up to pretty much nothing. Everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors and a lot of borrowers being priced out of the market. Austin has generated more in volume and commissions in the first quarter of 2023. Then he generated all of last year. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Marinate your mind on that, right? So that's what's possible when we get you working smart as opposed to working hard and playing the victim to the market. After you listen to this interview, you're going to know in your heart of hearts that that's a choice, that it doesn't have to be your you know, plight in the prison of playing the victim to the market, you no longer have to play that prisoner role. You can be a victor, not to be the victim. So why don't we kick things off, Austin, just to give people a little bit of an acquaintance with you and where you're coming from and your background. How long you been in the business? What inspired you to get into the business? And just give us a little bit of an origin story as to where you're located and uh, how you got into this crazy industry. Yeah. So I'm based here in Kansas City, um, Mortgage Alley for the consumer direct programs that you see out there. A lot of internet leads um, here in town for the nationwide lending. And I actually started my career at JP Morgan in asset management. I did that for about seven years. And in 2017, um, a buddy of mine was in the mortgage business and he was like, Hey, why don't you, you know, you're really good at that. Is that where you want your career to be day in and day out? Or do you want to, do you want to grow, you know, try and help people even more? in buying houses. And I was like, honestly, like helping people get into a home and helping people get into a better financial position. That just, uh, that's really what brought me to the mortgage business. You know, a lot of people will come to the mortgage business saying, Oh, you can make a lot of money. Well, you can, if you're willing to work hard or if you're willing to work smart with it and build those relationships. So I got into the business doing a lot of lead based, uh, you know, working directly with consumers, looking to shop around for the best rate online all across the country. Did very well with that. Um, And then as rates shifted, um, 
you know, you have to start, you have your customer, customer base. Um, but you know, everybody had to start shifting to referral based, you know, refinances are trying up every, somebody out there has a better rate than there's always somebody else that's going to have a better rate. So you can't sell rate. And what got me into the referral based business was I just knew that the lead base was kind of drying up and, and that just wasn't how I wanted to continue my career. And so I, I transferred over to try and start establish relationships a little over a year ago. And um, throughout the year, eventually I uh, came across you know, your program and, and coaching and, and trying to better establish relationships and work smarter, not harder. Yeah. So it's a bit like you were the bear in the zoo at the beginning by virtue of uh, relying on leads, waiting for the zookeeper to throw meat over the fence, right? Yep. Because when you're relying on the company leads, it's a bit like uh, you're a prisoner of the plight of relying on someone else to feed you. Yep. So you don't really ever have real freedom. You have what I call faux freedom, right? Yep. Where you're kind of the guinea pig on the guinea pig wheel. Yep. And there's a glass ceiling over your head and there's only so far you can take it. There's only so much autonomy you can have when you're relying on leads. Those of you who've been there and you've been the desk monkey, uh, smiling and dialing all day and more dialing than smiling. You guys know what I'm talking about. And then as, as, as soon as the uh, proverbial you know threshold of diminishing returns hit, all of a sudden now it's like, does it really make sense for me to stay in this zoo? Uh, the meat is getting smaller by the day. I'm getting skinnier by the day. Maybe I just need to leap over the fence and go after real freedom versus faux freedom. And you realize early in the game that if you don't learn how to hunt in the wild, like a wild Kodiak, it ain't going to go so well. Right. That's so true. therein lies the reason why you joined us here on planet prosper at mortgage marketing coach.com. But tell us about the journey. Tell us about, the real heartbeat of why you got in the business to begin with in terms of your motivation to get into this industry and how that contrasted with your journey uh, prior to joining us up on planet prosper here, because obviously there was a clash, right? You had a heart cry for something that you wanted to create in your life and your career. And it wasn't exactly panning out. Had you ha how you hoped and so tell us about the real struggle on the front lines of capitalism in the real world on the front lines of real life prior to joining us here on planet prosper, what were some of the most potently painful landmines you were stepping on and uh, the most uh, you know painful struggle that you were going through prior to us meeting? Yeah. So the biggest struggle is, I mean, coming off of uh, 2019, 2020, most of 2021, I mean, you could throw a stick out there and you could land a client, you know, Hey, what's your mortgage rate? Oh, well, there's 2.75 all day long on a 30 year conventional right now. You know, you want to do it? It was, it, it was as simple as that. So, I mean, um, you know, but going through the struggles of 2017 and 2018, when those were also a little bit slower markets and we we're starting to see some rising rates, we got a little taste of it in 2018. Um, was still able to, to come out on top in those years and still do quite a bit of business before it was so easy. So, I mean, I knew how to dig in and, and call people. I knew how to overcome those objections. Um, but it was different in 20, towards the end of 2021 when we started to see rates rise a little bit again. Uh, my goal with this industry was always been to, or has always been to help people look at options and educate customers on you don't have to do a vanilla 30 year fixed. You don't have to do a vanilla FHA just because you're a first time home buyer. You could, there's, here's some alternatives that uh, let's look down the road. Let's look at your long-term five-year plan. You know, is it, um, if you're only going to be in this house two years because your job's keeping here for two years, or if you're going to have, you know, child here in nine months, you know, are you going to outgrow this house in a few years? But thinking long term with people and really planning um, is really what allowed me to enjoy this industry and not just paper pushing and order taking for people. Mm, yeah, um, being a problem so, solver. Exactly. <clears throat> so the struggles that I really started seeing was, well, I knew that the leads, I knew a lead based business wasn't the future. So I started to try and figure out how to develop relationships with divorce attorneys, financial advisors that I knew um, from my past life as an asset management 
role at JP Morgan um, with even realtors here in town. And everybody's a realtor. Everybody knows a realtor. Um, and so I would try to start just having, oh, well, just go have coffee meetings with them. Just get your name out there. Establish a relationship. And you start calling these people. And I'd probably have them two or three coffees a week. I probably met with from, let's say, February through July, I probably met with 45 realtors here in town and in Nashville. I also had a group in Nashville that I uh, customer base in Nashville, Tennessee. And so between those two cities, I probably met with 45 agents. And wow. every time it was the same thing. Well, this is where I, you know, this is my company. This is what we do. And it just seemed like it's the same pitch that everybody else is receiving, you know, um, and throughout towards the end of the year, people are like I'm getting 20 calls in two weeks from all these loan officers. They're all saying the same thing. We got mm -hmm. great, rate. We got great service. We'll close, you know, in 30 days or whatever. Right. And it's just the same thing. And I was like, I am sick and tired of pitching that. Like, that's not what I'm, that's not what I want to pitch. And right. I went to my boss and I was like, what am I doing that the guy that does a hundred million dollars a year, what am I doing differently here? You know, what am I doing wrong here? And he just looked at me and he was like, well, it didn't sound like you're very confident. And I'm like, no, I'm definitely very confident. Like these people love talking to me. You know, They'll pick up the phone or they'll get happy hour with me or whatever. But for them, it's just a free coffee for them. It's just a free happy hour, a free dinner or whatever. Right. And it it's doesn't matter how much confidence you have. If you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a freaking problem. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and it's just was like, I'm tired of spinning my wheels here. And, you know, I I talked with quite a few different, you get online, you Google mortgage coaching, you Google, you know, how can I get leads? How can I get in front of more people? Uh, you know, I only did 16 deals last year. Uh, wow. That was it. That, that hurts. It. Yeah. I mean, it was like, Four and a half million dollars of business in one year when I'm used to Oof. doing 40 to 50 a year, you know, and I was like, this is not sustainable, you know, and then I randomly came across the, the um, you know, your advertisement, your information. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll listen. I'll listen. And that uh, bald headed dude just won't leave me alone. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the relentless ball headed beaner just uh, keeps chasing me around all over the internet. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so it was very frustrating. Um, it was extremely frustrating because my entire career in the car business, my you know, grew up family was in the car business here in town, huge dealership in town. Um, uh, really, really successful in the asset management sphere with, with people really successful in the mortgage sphere up to this point. Um, and it was, it was this transition of, all right, well, how do we build these relationships the right way? You know, what, what really is my value proposition outside of great service, great rates, you know, the same old stuff that everybody else right. claims, but then they can't perform on. Um, and so it, it really was frustrating. It was very frustrating. I yeah, I can imagine, you know, to uh, to do 14 loans in an entire year, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how you slice it or dice it, unless you're used to living off, uh, you know, food coupons and living in I can't afford a prison. That's a massive kick to the nuts or the ovaries, depending on uh, your gender, then uh, you certainly were anticipating or hoping at this stage in your career. So here you are at this season in your career. Uh, you're struggling to make inroads. You're, you know, struggling to uh, establish your own relationships. You're showing up to the proverbial gunfight with a butter knife, unequipped and ill-equipped. You don't have a value proposition that really is grabbing attention. So there's a lot of what we call splashing around in the ocean, but not a whole lot of paddle paddling powerfully towards Paradise Island. Easy for me to say. Say that ten times fast. Yeah. A whole lot of ease. And so you're looking for something, but in the midst of looking for something, you're coming up short. What for you was your deepest fear that was keeping you up at night, that was keeping you in anxiety and stress all day, every day at that stage in your career, uh, knowing that your best efforts were coming up short? 
the biggest fear was how am I going to, how am I going to survive this? How am I going to keep paying for, you know, uh, my life? You know, how am I going to be able to put food on the table? How am I going to be able to keep, uh, uh, I had a side business that I'd started uh, the year prior, about a year and a half prior. And I was like, how am I going to keep this going? You know? So I had a business hanging over my head. I had, um, an e- it was an e-commerce business. I had, you know, family to take care of at the same time. I had, uh, I just had expenses, you know, um, just like everybody else in life, you know, you have your house, you have your, any, um, taxes, you have whatever it is, right. You, you, you have things you got to keep going. And it's like, if I'm not making any money. Like, how am I going to keep all this stuff going? Um, right. So, and it was just also the fear of being a failure at the same time, uh, mm. to be quite honest. And, you know, that fear of always being so successful in life, whatever you put your mind to, it's like a farmer. If I plant 10 seeds of corn, I'm going to have 10 stocks of corn. So that, that mindset of well, keep working, keep chugging, keep going, keep pushing, keep, you know, persevering. Uh, and that fear of, well, everything I've done in my life to get me to achieve certain goals is not working. Well, I'm a failure. What do I do? And um, that, 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 that sense of, of uh, really humbling yourself, uh, I guess, was the big was part of that fear. What was your biggest fear around the consequence of failure? Uh, was it how your peers would see you, how your parents would see you? Was it all the wasted time uh, in your career? Losing was just it the fear of just losing my identity. You know, mm. I've always been this guy that, that um, I was always the guy that, hey, if someone's going through something, talk to Austin. He's going to mm. help you get your mind back, back to where it needs to be. He's going to wow. really motivate you. He's going to really be, um, you know, if you're going through a breakup, he's going to help you figure, you know, he's going to, he's going to listen to you, you know? So mm. for me to be in that position was, was huge. Cause it's like the one person that I would always go to had passed a year ago. And so I didn't have, I didn't have that person to talk to like I had in the past. So it literally was, can I get myself through this? And if I can't get myself through this, what's that going to say to all these cousins, all these friends, all these people that look up to me to, you know, as that light, as that, that light in the darkness and I'm not able to do that. So does that mean that I'm just a fraud? Mm, Those were wow. the thoughts going through my head at the time. Right. And it's like, it just was a loss of identity, you know? Yeah. And, um, which is so weird that a job, a job, a career can do that to somebody, you know? Well, that's mean, one of the reasons why I ask you, because if that's really when people say failure, there's always something underneath that. There's a deeper root. It's not the fear of failure that we're most afraid of. It's the deeper root. And it's usually, it's interesting you mentioned your identity. It's usually an identity crisis where yeah. your life does not match up with how you see yourself. And that identity dissonance, that's where the deepest soul pain is, soul suffering is, right? Yep. Yep. And it so, showed. It showed. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you remember when I first started, um, when I came into it. I mean, I I have never in my life have felt like that before. And it was like, what do I do here? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, but the little changes you can make it goes a long way. And it really, it really did. It really did. Yeah. So you obviously were going through the dark night of the soul, uh, where, you know, sleepless nights, uh, anxiety, worry, uh, frustration, like, you know, all that last year, 10 pounds. Yeah. So it gives you an idea. I I, I literally was not eating. People would come up to me and right around the beginning of summer last year. And they'd be like, are you okay? Like, are you sick? Like you've lost some weight. Like you look good, but you've definitely lost some weight and come to find out I'd lost 10 pounds, 12 pounds. And I'm, yeah, I'm the, mm-hmm. I go to the gym. I'm not a big, big built guy, but it's like when people start noticing and they start saying things for literally five weeks in a row, it's right. like, 
okay, something. And it was just hard to eat even. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't even eat breakfast. Yeah, and you, you know. Look at it. <laughs> And you know that uh, it's a real problem when other people start to notice it. You know, it's one thing if it's your own uh, silent problem that you're you feel like you're only acquainted to, and it's your own uh, suffering that you have to endure yourself. But as soon as you start to see that other people are noticing the consequences, ramifications, and impact of that, that's when it really gets real. And it's like, okay, the delusional optimism that might have just been a a, a slight thread before is completely gonzo now at that point, you know, it's like, okay, this yeah. is a real shit storm. I need to find a way to get out of this. And so tell me about some of the things you did to try and get out of this problem. Uh, obviously there's no shortage of uh, so-called easy button hawkers and silver button hawk, uh, silver bullet hawkers that are happy to take your money I often liken it to, you know, the higher you want to build the skyscraper of your dream, the deeper you need to dig the foundation. But if you're digging that hole with a gardening trowel, we got a freaking problem, <laughs> right? There's something yeah. called an excavator. And unfortunately, most of the vendors out there, they're happy to take your money to give you a shovel at best with some substandard solution, whether it be crappy leads off the internet that don't convert or cold calling realtors every Monday that just gets you pounding your head against the wall, doing it the hard yep. way just to get the door slammed in your face. Uh, so tell me about that journey. Cause obviously uh, you know, we weren't the first phone call. So tell us about some of the things you tried that uh, didn't work as well as you had hoped. So at the time I was working for a mortgage brokerage firm and they were called fairway and the office I was in, they would have like these, classes every Wednesday where, um, and they were great. I mean, we read this book called seven levels of communication and it really focused on, you know, just building relationships and communicating better and getting, you know, getting your mindset in, in a better spot. Um, and it was, um, so, I mean, and then they were like, okay, build your list of everybody, you know, everybody, you know, um, and it's like, all right, just start going and <clears throat> talking to a bunch of people that, you know, go have coffees. And, uh, it's like, okay, so I'm talking to my friends that I haven't talked to in a few years. I'm meeting up with some, some realtors that I knew. And it was like, again, I'd met what 40, 40, 45 people in that, that six, seven month time frame, um, realtors that is, and you know, every day it's like, okay, you got a time block got a time block when you're going to follow up with people. You got a time block when you're going to call people. And it just was the same answer every time. It's like, Nope, Nope. I got my guy. I got my guy. And it's like, okay, well, if you want to give me a shot? Give me a shot. <laughs> um, I even met with a, I ended up connecting with a lady at a builder's open house who wanted to try and sell me on this idea of, well, we're just going to completely market you. We're going to completely brand you. We want 500 people that you know, and we're just going to send them newsletters. We're going to get basically blast out there that you are in mortgages. You are the mortgage guy. And it was like, yes, you want to spend how much <laughs> to buy into this? And you only spend how much every month for Facebook advertisements or Instagram advertisements for the posts and all this. And it was like, yeesh, I just don't see that's not going to be helpful. Um, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I even tried to find leads. I was like, where can I just find some leads to call? Because I was very good at converting leads. And it's like, well, we want $5,000 a month for these leads. And I'm like, nope, that's not, that's not it. Because it's just, again, leads aren't really going to be where it's at. Um, a couple of realtors were like, well, I want $15,000 a month to split on my marketing budget. You can be my go-to guy. And I'm like, I did that once. I'm not doing Zillow leads because believe me, you might get a thousand leads in a month, but you probably only get to get four actual deals out of that. And if you're getting $200,000 sales times four, you're not even doing a million dollars in business on those four Zillow leads that you just, you know, out of a thousand. Yeah, that's definitely doing it the hard way. Yeah, Sifting through okay. a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets, right? That's yeah. definitely doing it the hard way. Yeah, yeah. We just don't have the time for that. There's just, I'm no. not going to. No. 
<laughs> I don't We're need not a concussion. Signing <laughs> not signing up for that program. Exactly. Been there, done that. So it just, uh, I mean, that was really it. And then I, fortunately, I came across your, your program. You had like an hour video or something that, was basically here's five ways to to you know get the realtors wanting to come to you as opposed to you chasing them. I was like, okay, that makes sense. How do you do that? And um, and then you know, so that's that's kind of where it started from there. Yeah. So there are no accidents, brother. By divine orchestration, you uh, saw the ad. You stopped scrolling. You w- watched the. Uh, you read the ad, you clicked on the ad, you opted in for the webinar, you watched the webinar. At the end of the webinar, you booked a complimentary breakthrough call. And uh, obviously something happened between there and now such that you've had quite a tale of transformation that we're about to really highlight in a moment in terms of the before and after. But uh, needless to say, it's a bit like you were in a dark, damp cave and all of a sudden someone flipped on the lights and turned on the heat, right? Whole new world. So let's just kind of unpack a little bit about that journey in micro steps. Let's start with that precipice moment where you get to the end of this complimentary breakthrough call, you have a real deal, raw, honest conversation around what sucks the most about doing it the hard way and what's the ultimate consequence if you don't get this problem fixed. And just stepping into the light of truth, which is often scary, right? As Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. What he didn't say is it's probably going to piss you right off and make you feel really uncomfortable. (laughs) the truth is very inconvenient and uncomfortable. And this was certainly no exception. So, you know, you had that courageously vulnerable, open and honest conversation with one of my consultants. And uh, at the end of the conversation, it was like, okay, here's your opportunity to kick this problem in the teeth once and for all. And to get armed and dangerous, you're showing up to the gunfight with a freaking tank instead of wielding the butter knife. So we can fix this problem once and for all and get you winning in any market, not just a fair weather market. And all of a sudden there's fear show up, right? Because shiznit gets real, real when all of a sudden there's skin in the game required. And now it's not just talking it. Now you got to walk the talk and actually have an opportunity to get skin in the game to your dream. Tell us about what you were feeling in that moment and what fear was there for you that stood in the way of you being decisive and striking while the iron is hot and investing in yourself, investing in your business and investing in your ability to make uh, freedom money in your business once and for all, such that you said, screw it, let's do it. What was that fear for you in that moment? Because there's always that terror barrier, right? Where yeah. as soon as you, after your dream, you hit that terror barrier and you're stepping out of your comfort zone. It's right on the outer edge of your comfort zone. Every time we go after our dream, we have to step out of our comfort zone and we always, without fail, will hit that terror barrier. What was it for you? So... Yeah, as soon as I was like, all right, sign here, it, it, you're, you're, what was going through my head was, well, obviously, this is an investment. Um, do I want to make this investment or not in myself? Weighing the pros and cons of, okay, well, what can I do with this money? Is it going to be, if I, if I don't spend it, I know I got another month or two of, or, you know, three, two or three months of, um, you know, that I can survive basically, or I can invest it in myself and this and see what, see what goes. Um, and it wasn't, I grew up with the mindset of the biggest risk is never taking one. So Mm. if you don't take a risk, you're never going to know. And so it took me a, a couple back and forth minutes. Um, on the call. And I finally was like, you know what? It, it, it makes sense. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's at the end of the day, you can always make more money, go get a second job. You can always do what you know, you're always going to have to do what you have to do. If you have to work at Wendy's to pay the bills, you're going to work at Wendy's to pay the bills, right? Um, Find a way to survive. There's exactly. always a way. So you can either choose to, I told myself, I was like, all right, you can either sit here and choose to feel sorry for yourself, or you can just choose to walk out the door and get going. And, you know, the biggest risk is not taking that risk. So I took the risk and I said, let's just go, let's do it. Let's get started. Um, 
you know, let, let, there's, there's no reason to hold back at this point. So you took the plunge all in, screw it, let's do it. We launched you on Planet Prosper. And now it's a new level of shiznit getting real because now it's about massive action, feeling your fear, doing it anyways, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable and, you know, putting in the reps to build that mastery muscle. And obviously there's a lot that comes with that, right? There's confusion, there's overwhelm, there's stress, there's, you know, there's a lot, there's a big learning curve, right? Growth is always uncomfortable. There's no such thing as comfortable growth, right? You go to the gym, you want to build muscle, you better get ready to get freaking uncomfortable. That's just par for the course, right? No pain, no strain, no gain. Same thing here. So here you are now on Planet Prosper, and now you got a new challenge called, okay, I need to hustle because I've only got three months of tarmac before I'm out of tarmac. So, you know, I'm, I'm not messing around here, but the fear is real. The overwhelm's real. Tell us about the skepticism that you may have had in the midst of all this, right? Because there's a tension where, you know, you need to show up, you know, you need to be coachable, you know, you need to be committed, you know, you need to be decisive and resourceful, but then there's that bent towards, you know, playing it safe, playing it small, hiding behind excuses uh, and slipping back into the wimp self versus operating in the winner self. So tell us about another part of being human, by the way, in this program and in life is uh, we have skepticism show up, right? You hire a personal trainer. There's, they're going to tell you to do stuff that you're kind of skeptical. Like, really, you want me to eat apples with peanut butter? Are you kidding me? Like, you know, is that really going to work? So tell me about some of the skepticism that was on uh, the initial um, implementation phase of, you know, launching this new way of doing business where you're attracting versus chasing. Uh, You've got a new morning routine. Uh, We're getting you out of your comfort zone. What were some of the things you're like, "Uh, is that really going to work? Tell us about that for a moment. Uh, For me, it was a cold shower. (laughs) <laughs> i was like no way and take a cold shower every day there is no way i'm doing that <laughs> no thank you <laughs> Let me just turn it to cold for a second and back uh-uh, not happening yeah uh-uh. the shrinkage is real you know the shrinkage is real <laughs> the more we shrink the more we soar just saying uh, so it was uh no it just was all right it, it was, it was just a patience thing. You know, it takes a minute to get to figure it out. You know, you have to go through, you know, your first couple of weeks of practicing, of understanding and getting real with yourself on, okay, here's where I'm at now. Where do I want to be? And let's practice this. Let's practice this. And let's practice this. And then you're going to get there. So it's just taking the pieces and putting them together. And it's like when you're putting together a, a Lego set. I don't do Legos, but my friend does. And we're getting him a Lego thing for his birthday or whatever is a joke. So it's like doing a Lego set. Uh, If you don't have the instructions because you lost them and you're trying to put this stuff together, you know, finally you find the instructions and you put this piece together, you put this piece together. And all of a sudden you have this huge Star Wars ship or whatever thing you're putting together on the Lego and it, it, it comes together. So the, the, uncertainty of, well, what is this going to do? Well, what is this going to do? Why is, why is this going to be helpful? Uh, But slowly as you just trust and put it together as it builds upon itself, it, um, it, it, you start to see, okay, well, this is the direction we're going. This is, this is, this is where it's taking me. Um, This is what I need to do. And then you're like, okay, got to keep going. Turn on the thrusters. So you're putting in, the time you're doing your push-ups, you're sweating, you're bleeding, you're skinning your knees, you're getting out of your comfort zone, you're, you know, pushing yourself to get comfortable being uncomfortable in the dojo of mortgage marketing on Planet Prosper at mortgagemarketingcoach.com. Everything we told you about in terms of, you know, this this is not all going to be lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows, right? It's going to take something for you to make this dream a reality. Now, all of a sudden, it's in your face every day. What was the hardest part? of the initial journey, getting this thing off the runway? And what was the most surprising part for you in terms of results? The hardest part was just, you know, I compiled my new list of of people I wanted to touch base with. And the hardest part was just reaching back out to them. A lot of people Mm. that had 
know in the past or um, just starting over, starting fresh and trying it again. You know, um, I've, I've always been really good on the phone. I've never been scared of the phone. And all of a sudden, here I am scared of the phone. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what are we doing here? So it's just like, okay, trust on all the work you put into it. Um, it's kind of like a swim meet, you know, you, you spend all this time practicing and now you're at the Olympic trials. You got to get on that block and jump and go, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't be scared of, of the dive. Oh, am I going to dive right? Or my goggles going to fall off as I jump into the water to swim? No, none of that. You have to just, and that's for me is it just was like, all right, coaching myself to just take a breather and go with it. And, and that was, that was, that was the biggest thing. And what was the most surprising part for you in terms of how it played out in terms of results as you executed, did your push ups, put in the reps and belt started to you build know, some muscle and momentum? Yeah. That first week, I think I hit up 20 realtors and I had nine meetings set up for the fall. And I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> right? How did that happen? Um, and these weren't just, they weren't just people that I'd hit up in the past. I mean, these were big producing realtors that obviously have relationships. And I was like, how did I just get a meeting with this person? They were never going to take my call before. Did like, you really say yes? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? Like, what? Little old me. Right? <laughs> Do you realize that I'm pretty clueless and I'm shaking my boots right now? How did I get a yes from that guy? Right. I think it's because I looked like a, uh, a mortgage leech before, and now I was looking like a swan. <laughs> right? Or I don't know, something like that. Right? So. And yeah, shift in identity. And all of a sudden, it's like you're taking action that was leading outside of your identity. Your identity had to catch up with you in terms of owning the badassery that you are in this area. Because no one had taught you how to hunt in the wild like a wild Kodiak before. So yeah. this is all new for you, right? Yeah. 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 So your Kodiak identity was, uh, was still trying to, you know, develop into the fullness of competence that breeds confidence. So you had to feel the fear, do it anyways. And that's exactly what you did. Nine appointments in one week. Chances are you got more appointments in one week with our system than you had gotten in the last six to 12 months combined with certainly with top producers. True. Yeah. Yeah. Successful appointments actually at that. So and so tell was, us about that. Tell us about the appointment and how the appointments were different than your previous iterations when you're in the to oh, the cold, damp cave, uh, not having a proven plan and just kind of winging it, throwing yogurt at the fan, hoping something sticks. What was the difference? The difference was people when I got to the meetings, um, the big the big realtors were like, you know, I took your call, I took your meeting because you're not sitting here just trying to wine and dine me and ask me for business you are looking for solutions to help drive more business. And nobody's asked me to do that. You know, even my, my guy that I have, the lone guy that I have, um, you know, that they're like, they're not sitting here willing to help. They're just sitting here taking, taking deals from me. Um, yeah. Lonely. And, too. Exactly. And they were like, that's why I'm, I was interested in meeting with you to see what you have to say. What can you do? Where can we go? Um, you know, and so it was it was great. So we just kind of dived in and figured out what what the what the problems were. And that was a big shift, you know. In the past, you know, I'd yeah, you'd try and be like, well, what's your biggest pain point? Oh, nothing. I have a great loan officer, or whatever, whatever. It's like, oh, okay, we don't have any problems. But now it's like I was armed and ready with, Okay, well, you say you don't have any problems, but what are you doing about this? What are you doing with this? How is this working for you? Well, you're spending all this money on Zillow. How's that working out right now? Because Zillow apparently is firing realtors at the time. Um, and so it was just, it, it really established me as more of a uh, pro that, you know, taking myself outside of just being able to do loans and being an order taker to okay this is a business this is an industry let's get together and work together through this industry and see how we can make some things happen reminds me of the quote from abraham lincoln he said if i have four hours to cut down a tree i'll spend four hours sharpening my axe right 
So it's amazing how just taking some time to sharpen your ax makes such a difference in terms of your finesse, your flow, and yeah. your prowess uh, when it really counts in that moment of performance. And incredible too, just to be able to have a more robust, sophisticated skill set when it comes to diagnosing their pain and drilling down deeper and not taking their smoke screens and their buyer defense mechanisms and their delusional optimism proclivity at face value, but saying, yeah, uh, I can appreciate that, but let me ask you this and digging yeah. deeper. Next thing you realize it's all a facade. They're just trying to soften the problem because they don't want to expose the fact that they're hemorrhaging massive amounts of money to their competitors in lost deals because they just don't know what they don't know. And it makes them feel squeamish to have to expose that because they're a top producer, right? Their yeah. ego is vulnerable if, you, if, if they have to reveal that there's actually some wheels falling off the bus. But yeah. through caring and compassion and uh, the ability to elicit the truth, all of a sudden now, very much like the initial conversation we had with you where we're inviting you to step into the light of truth because truth be told, we can't change our reality till we face our reality. You're able to do likewise with these realtors because again, truth be told, they will not buy the solution if they have not first bought the problem. Yep. Right. Yep. So you're getting really good at, at now exposing the problem and getting them heart and mind connected to that problem such that they've bought the fact that they do have a real bleeding neck problem. And guess who is there to swoop in and save the day? Yep. That would be the awesome possum, one and only awesome Austin, right? Exactly. So exactly. the one and the only. So tell us about now, here you are six months, I believe somewhere approximately six months after you launched on Planet Prosper. Is that accurate? Yes. Just about yeah. six, seven months. So, yeah. So, you know, obviously you've had some time to build some muscle, to put in some reps, to build some momentum. Tell us about the before and after. What kind of volume production, uh, et cetera, were you doing prior to launching on Planet Prosper that had you biting your nails and freaking out and losing sleep, knowing you only had about three months left of tarmac before you had to do something drastic and go back to nine to five prison or something like that. And then where are you now? Give us the before and after, because obviously the, the contrast is quite distinct. Yes. Um, so last year I did a total of 14 deals, I think for about 5 million for the year. Um, now keep in mind, I'm used to doing anywhere from 25 to 50 million a year. I mean, let's take 2020 out of that, 2019 out of that. So on average, I'm used to doing about 25 plus a year. And, and just, um, just to give people uh, clarity, when did you decide to go from being the bear in the zoo to leap in the fence and going on a hundred percent commission self-source with no leads being fed to you? Yeah, that was uh Feb first of March last year. So I've yeah. been doing this just over a year in the full referral based. Right. Uh, so <laughs> you've been trying to win in the wild. Uh, and in the beginning, obviously, uh, it wasn't uh, winning in the wild is worrying in the wild is what was going on. Right. Uh, for yeah, approximately one year now. So when I call Austin a newbie, that's what I mean. Like you're not really an MLO until you're on a hundred percent commission, you would you kill with no safety net and you're self-sourcing your own business. Uh, prior yes. to that, you're, you're a bear in the zoo. You know, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about, you know, eating what you kill. Building so, a business, building a, yeah, book building business. a real business, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, about what would I say? 14 deals and about 5 million roughly. Uh, this year I'm already at, uh, gosh, 21 deals and, right. um, just over four, 4 million for the year. And that's not including what I've got closing the rest of this month. So. And how many deals yeah. were you doing a month? You were doing last year, approximately one deal a month, something Lucky like that. Get a deal a month. Yeah. So you went from month. one deal a month to now you're doing about on average around seven. If you've done that many in three months, it's approximately an average of seven a month. Is that right? Well, by the way, let's not forget. So after going through the program, putting all that time and effort and work and establishing the meetings, I ended up with, I'll just tell you right now, December, one, two, three, four, five of those deals were in December of last year. 
for eight hundred thousand. And, and that and was from the culmination. Yeah, that was December, and that was I was from the culmination of all the effort and work I put in from August through what October, November. Yeah, uh, three months basically. Relationships with people, uh, yeah. and then January of this year. I mean, it carried out, carries over. I had four, five deals in January um, for about a million. Uh, February was an off month. March, I had three deals for one point six. Um, Do you see your deals? So it's it's just yeah. So it, it builds upon itself, and so That's it's right just right. a matter of continuing to continuing to get things get things going bigger and and continuing to establish those more relationships and new relationships at the same time. So I mean, it's it, and tell it, us about the pipeline because obviously it's uh, you know people are well acquainted with the up and down roller coaster ride from hell. You know, one up one month down the next up one quarter down the next up one year down the next tell us about how the pipeline's looking in terms of momentum moving into you know the next couple months uh pipeline is is pretty pretty full i got a lot of people looking for houses right now so i mean i have a lot of i mean just, lots of yeah. shopper that's yeah. obviously par for the course in this market uh because inventory is still relatively limited and uh, it's still quite competitive. So, you know, I mean, we're in like that. Leads that I've been given from people just last month. This month already, I've got, it's, I've got 11 leads that I've received this month. So, I mean, it's like I have things working for the next few months, people looking for houses, um, trying to help people prepare with savings or credit repair or whatever, if that's needed too. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a busy rest of the year. Those aren't internet leads. Those are by referral only leads. No, those are all referred to me by realtors. <laughs> right. So what is that? 14 and that's, that's uh, 14 and 11. It's about a 30. lead a day. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. So if you're converting one out of four, hypothetically speaking, uh, you know, that means every four days you're closing a loan. That's not too shabby. Yeah. Coming yeah. from trying to get maybe a deal a month that's pretty darn good <laughs> yeah when you go from starvation mode and wondering you know how many more weeks you're going to be able to survive before you have to go back to nine to five prison and suffer the failure and the identity dissonance of no longer being the beacon of light but now being sucked into the darkness and being swallowed up by the obstacles that uh, overtook you and now you're just a fraud because you're not able to have the strength and the fortitude to overcome and now you're just part of the problem instead of being part of the solution. And now you're just another statistic getting chewed up and spat out. Literally, that was what was on your heart and mind all day, every day, literally yeah. six months ago. And look at you now, brother. Look at you now, rising up and winning and making, you know, in most cases, unless someone's been in the business a long time and they're used to making half a million to a million plus per year, most people would consider the kind of bank you're making right now prosperity money in comparison to uh, certainly mediocrity average and a lot of even veterans. I'm seeing veterans that used to make, you know, half a million plus a year. And they're lucky if they're going to make 80 K net after taxes this year, I kid you not. So even veterans would be like, man, I'd rather, you know, be in Austin shoes right now in comparison to where I'm at. And yet you've only been on the front lines as an MLO self-sourcing for a year. So, I mean, that's truly remarkable. Tell me about, the difference that's made the difference for you. In other words, there's a lot of different tools we put in your toolbox. There's a lot of arrows we put in your quiver for the benefit of our audience, highlight maybe one or two or three of the most potent weapons we gave you. That is really the difference that has made the difference from going from being on the struggle bus to really soaring like the Eagle that we know that you are and that you're capable of being what's the difference that's made the difference. I'd say the number one was the conversation and uh, having the conversation that we're having in that very first meeting, meeting with the realtors, probably been the biggest number one difference maker. Mm. Uh, being able to understand and know what questions to ask, know 
the end goal of a conversation with somebody. Um, the end goal of a conversation it, of, of your first meeting, it's not to just, oh, all right, great, we're going to start working together. Well, you can't just start dating the first time you meet somebody. You have to like figure out, well, do I pick this person? Is this a good fit? Like, is this the right direction we're going to go? Like, am I even going to like working with this person? You know? Right. Let alone uh, asking for marriage. That's yeah, a whole exactly. other level of stupid that you don't want to yeah. get into so, without knowing who you're dealing with. Yeah. And it's like, I've met a lot of people that I would never want to work with um, yep. at all. Uh, just the type of people they are, the type of people they work with or, um, or whatnot. But so that's the first thing I'd say. The second thing is that's really helped and bring a lot of value for a few realtors has been the dead lead resurrection uh, campaign. Mm. Otherwise known as the Lazarus campaign, resurrecting the so-called dead leads in their database. And tell me about how that has been such an impact maker. Cause some people might be thinking, well, why would I want to mess with dead leads? I mean, that sounds like I'm already sick and tired of dealing with crappy, uh, you know, borrowers that are unqualified. I am already being pegged as the you know, loan resurrection specialist. I don't want any more crappy leads. I want the good leads, Austin. Why would I want to do that for a realtor? Tell, tell that person a little bit more about how the program works and how it may, might be a little different than their preconceived notion. So it really ends up becoming a tool that allows someone to realize, oh my gosh, you're willing to sit here. And I mean, they said they're thinking that you're going to spend hours and weeks on resurrecting these people. And it's a very simple process. I mean, it takes 15, 20 minutes a day, if that, you know, for a week on a campaign. Um, but you end up getting in touch with a lot of people and you might get a lot of no's, but guess what? It's like super simple. You just deal with it. Um, it it's a very, very quick response that you can, you can make. Uh, but then you find the people that are still interested. You find the people that are considering things down the road and for the real, the impact, the value that it brings. And again, we're talking minimal time here that you're spending on this. Um, the impact that it brings in that relationship with you and that partner, that realtor partner is amazing. Um, could be one, because you're helping them find business that they just threw in the trash. Uh, two, uh, they're getting paid because they find them a house. Three, it's being able to say, yeah, you called me on a Saturday or at 10 o'clock at night. I'm answering the phone. Yeah, I might be out and about, but, or I'm, it's Sunday and yeah, I can send this over real quick or whatever. Hey, this person just responded. They want to go check this out. Um, or <laughs> solidif it's, it's just solidifying the relationship and provide proving that, Hey, I need this person because this person's going to take care of an issue. They're going to find a way to get this deal done that nobody else could. And, um, they're going to basically be my guy because I know how they operate now that I've done a deal with them. And it was a very smooth transaction, very easy transaction with one of the most difficult people that they've ever had to work with uh, before they came to me. Um, and just, you know, it also kind of goes back to your personal brand on how you operate your own business once you're in process with a loan or once you get a loan locked in or something or when you're under contract. But, um, it, it it opens the door. Let's put it that way. It's a way to open the door and to continue how far you want that relationship to go is really up to you and how hard you're willing to work with when you're under contract or whatnot. But it, it opens the door to, to be able to take that relationship to the next level to where they recognize that you are in, in, irreplaceable and super valuable for for their business. I love that word you used, irreplaceable, right? That's what I found. People, I mean, I had a realtor that straight up said, I need you to call this realtor and this realtor now because they could use you. And they're, you know, they have their office, real loan officer or whatever that the group makes them use. And she's like, I still need you to talk to them and meet with them and see if there's a way that we can help each other out. And I'm like, all right. So I got two more realtors that way. and. Oh, you know, 
we all went to happy hour a couple of weeks ago and um you, i couldn't believe how solid the relationship was as a result i am their go-to for everything right everything. and it started from they they didn't know you from a hole in the wall they're getting the door pounded in every single day by a bunch of loan leeches and mortgage parasites yep. they got the buyer defense mechanisms they got a high wall of cynicism resignation and their knee-jerk reaction is thanks, but no thanks. And nope. because you were armed and dangerous and roll into the gunfight with a freaking tank instead of the butter knife, you were able to overcome those buyer defense mechanisms, the skepticism, the rejection, all the stuff they were putting in your face. And you just yep. sidestepped it like marketing Aikido. Yep. And you found a way to get your foot in the door. You led with value. You helped them identify where they're leaving money on the table. And you showed them you truly care by asking quality questions because the person who asked the question is in control of the conversation. You're leading powerfully because everyone's desperately, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, desperately begging to be led. People yep. need someone who can lead and you're stepping into your true identity as a problem solver. How great does that feel, by the way, to actually be a real problem solver, having these realtors eating out of your hand, the best realtors in town, to have the ability to pick and choose the realtors you work with and only work with the cool cats who pass the chug test, those who go to the, you know, the barbecue or to the bar with you. Yep. And have a bevy with you because they're cool cats. You love and adore them. They love and adore you. You got synergy chemistry. You got that connection. And to have them go all in with you, send you all their business all the time and see you as irreplaceable and indispensable and having a solid stable of rock star top producers who own the lion's share of the inventory in the market that allows you to be least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most. You can weather any storm, you can win in any market. How great does that feel to have that muscle and that mastery and to know you're just getting warmed up? It, it feels great. It feels great. All right. I'm celebrating you, brother. I'm celebrating, yeah. I'm celebrating your coachability. I'm celebrating your uh, too much grit to quitness because there was moments in the beginning where I know it's like, man, you were feeling uh, the strain in your soul of like how hard it is to get into the gym and to put weights under your muscle that is highly uncomfortable because it's way more muscle than you're used to pushing. And I'm just honoring you for having the courage, the persistence and the fierce in it to win it, whatever it takes mindset to, uh, to dive in and do your best. And here you are now on the other side of having, more deals come in in your first quarter of 2023 than you got all of last year. And then some with a brimming pipeline, like brother, I'm beyond delighted and excited for you. Super proud yeah. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's definitely uh, definitely a good feeling. What are you most excited about moving forward? Obviously we're still in the face of a so-called market shift, market storm. So obviously lots can start to open up as the market opens up, but what are you most excited about now? Just six months later. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I'm just excited to see where things go. I mean, I know that at some point, you know, markets will open up, whether it's six months from now, a year from now, two years from now. Um, you know, and if you can make it through this market, you know, you're going to be successful. There's been a lot of condensing, a lot of people leaving the business, but I'm just excited to to be able to keep going and start start attacking my goals again. And building, you know, not even just attacking goals, but building new goals and bigger goals for the future. So that, yeah. that's really what I'm, I'm excited for. And you got the muscle to do it, brother. It's just rinse, wash, and repeat. If you can go from one to seven deals a month uh, in six months with just a relatively small but powerful stable of top producing realtors, imagine if you did the exact same campaign over the next six months. Take exactly. you from seven deals a month to 15. Yep. And then from 15 to 20. Now we're talking seven figures, baby. Yeah. So and that's, that's what I'm declaring for you, brother, that you are a seven figure earner. Now we just need to get your marketing muscle and your bank account to catch up with you. Exactly. Exactly. Right. But you know how to do it. So it's just rinse, wash and repeat. Right. Awesome. Track, bro. I appreciate you for taking the time to share your journey. I know many have been watching and being inspired moment by moment by your real life testimony and story on the front lines of real life the good, the bad, the ugly, the glory on the other side. And what's cool is that uh, the harder the obstacle, the greater the glory in overcoming it, right? The deeper yeah. the value, uh, the more the glory on the summit. And so 
I just honor you again for the faith it took for you to, uh, to continue to plod forward when all you could see was that next step ahead of you. And you just decided to have enough faith in yourself and your dream to continue to be faithful to your dream in spite of not seeing anything beyond that next step. And, uh, you're an inspiration brother. So I appreciate you very much. And thank you on behalf of our audience for sharing your story today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you've been listening, yeah, and it's been a pleasure brother and, uh, you gotta be knowing I'm going to be in your corner on your team every step of the way for the next, uh, summit that you're going to conquer. And there's going to be many more summits you're going to conquer. So again, you're just getting warmed up. You haven't seen nothing yet. You're just scratching the surface of the surface. We're on the way. We're on the way. It's getting warmed up. So if you've been watching this, listen to this guys, and you're inspired by Austin's story, just know that his story can be your story. And then some that there's nothing that Austin has done that you can't do. And then some, And that's why we do these interviews to give you guys hope, but also to give you guys clarity and confidence that you don't have to play the victim to the market, that you can be a victor in any market. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this and you're like, Dorn, Austin, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I need me some of that marketing firepower that Austin's talking about. I can relate to his plight. I do have the sleepless nights. I do have the frustration. I do have the constant anxiety worry about how I'm going to keep the lights on. I've got dependents to feed. I can't afford to fail. There's too much at stake. If that's you and you are in it to win it and you refuse to lose, then I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply and book a call, the same call that marked a defining moment in Austin's journey, where we just had an honest conversation and you have an opportunity to have the same thing with myself or one of my consultants, where we just simply have an honest conversation, lift up the hood on your business, look at where you're at, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. And frankly, if not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass, but either way, Our goal for you on that call, friends, is that you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Unless you're not a very fun person, then we won't. But that being said, I just want to invite you guys, if you're listening to your business to the next level, win in any market, you're 100% commission mortgage professional, making 70 basis points or higher comp, residential mortgage pro, and you want to add at least another $100,000, $200,000 plus to your annual income in the next 12 months, in spite of the market, in spite of rates, in spite of inventory, in spite of so-called inflation, all that stuff that you don't have control over and you want to gain control by getting on the driver's seat position in your business and grabbing the helm and pushing the needle on profit performance and growth in your business, regardless of those outside circumstances, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys. So before we sign off, Austin, if someone's listening to this and they're like, it sounds good, but I'm right now running on fumes financially. I don't think I can afford to make an investment right now. You know, maybe I should wait until uh, things warm up a little bit in the spring market, maybe uh, close a few more loans before I make a bold, intelligent, strategic investment of myself. I can't afford to put any more strain on the household finances at this point to invest in myself. Uh, I'm not even going to book a call yet because, you know, I don't want to I don't want to book a call if I can't uh, be in a position to actually, you know, make an investment. What would you say to someone like that who's on the fence and is uh, feeling like, they know they need to solve this problem, but they're letting circumstances hold them back from being decisive and actually doing something about solving the problem. Life doesn't happen to us. We make our future and the biggest risk in life is never taking one. And if, you know, at the end of the day, we are mortgage professionals. So we, you know, we reap what we sow. And if, we're going to hold ourselves back with, Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Then you're never going to make it. You're never going to do it. But if you Mm -hmm. sit there and you find a way, if there's a will, there's, there's always a way. And that's what I had to tell myself. I was in the darkest, the deepest, you know, I had nothing literally done. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. if I can do it, anybody can do it. If there's that will, there's a way. 
And if you want to get to the next level and you want to get out of the rut, you'll find a way to make it happen. And that's what I told myself. And I did. I found a way to make it happen. Um, and that's, that's, that's really it. Amen, brother. Couldn't have said it better. And you are an embodiment of the truth that when you're committed, there's always a way. If someone's just interested, there's always an excuse. But when you're committed, there's always a way. There is no obstacle too big for the committed. And you're a perfect case in point in that often. So again, super proud of you. Excited about your future. And uh, also just excited about your present because uh, this is the spot where all the good stuff pours out. Living your best life now. Exactly. Exactly. I appreciate you, you, brother. Thank you for being here. Guys, thank you for watching. Let's get after it. Live your best life now and be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. You just listened to the one and only Austin Klein, Dorn Aldana from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Coming at you live, y'all. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.